Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be located. Is this thing on? Microphone check, checkity check. So, how y'all doing? By the eclipse. Did you burn out your corneas? <laughs> I saw somebody posted, I uh, forget who it was, that Google searches of my eyes hurt. <laughs> What's wrong with my eyesight have increased since the eclipse. Um, well, I spent it just as I said I would reading a lovely book called The Greatness of Saturn, trying to remind myself that my ruling planet, Saturn, is really the best planet. Not the best planet in like the most fun planet or uh, uh, life is better as a Capricorn or... <laughs> Part aspects to Saturn really rock, not the greatest in that regard. But we do have a Saturn aspect happening right now. And I did upload my weekly astrology and I wanted to come back in because there's just so much more. But wait, there's more. So if you survive and you push through the Saturn Mars conjunction, which I think is just, uh, we have so much layered astrology right now, right? We've got Aries, which is like, come on, let's go. The new thing, the reset, you know, power to the individual. And it's cool. But the ruler of the eclipse, the ruler of Aries, Mars, is stuck, like, with Saturn. It's almost like having an intestinal blockage, and you're all like, no, uh, this is not a personal commentary. My, my moves are smooth, but uh, it's just, you know, you just got to get over that hump. And maybe by hump day, not maybe, but by hump day, Mars has passed Saturn and we're feeling a little bit more apt to be able to move forward. It's just that Saturn says, stop, wait, slow down. Check all your gauges and check in on your responsibilities, right? Your commitments, the work, the, all the Saturn shit. So, you know, Saturn's not a fun planet, not really. Do I sound whiny? <laughs> This is absolutely affecting me. I fucking hate it. Because I'm like all up in my Aries stuff, which is, it's my first house, but it's not my ascendant. Pisces is my ascendant. So, you know, when you scratch under the surface, I am very much Aries-like, but it's a challenge because I have Saturn there, but enough about me. Um, so Saturn and Mars in my 12th house. Can't sleep for shit. I'm just, I'll be happy when this is all over. It's like, fuck, I have so much work to do. But, you know, we will move through it. And it's just very, it's a very intense time. As you know, Mercury is retrograde. We have Mercury retrograde aspects coming this week. Mercury is moving backwards towards the sun. They're moving towards one another. They'll conjunct on the 11th. 
Um, we have Uranus and Jupiter. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that today. I was just reading something earlier in um, a great, great old, I like the old texts, an old astrology text that I found on archive.org, medical astrology. And it's describing some of the effects of I mean, it is actually pretty exhaustive, <laughs> the effects and significations of the planet Uranus. And so we have Jupiter Uranus coming together. Tomorrow, the moon will be in, Ju in Taurus conjuncting Jupiter and Uranus, which I think will bring some pretty cool, unexpected shocking developments um i feel like all really all of the action post eclipse is going to be you know i mean the stuff that anyone was expecting to happen on the day of the eclipse didn't happen so not exactly not that we saw but eclipses do hide things and things do unfold with the transits to the eclipse degree and the once we get past the mars saturn because saturn is putting the brakes on it's putting the brakes on mars mars is the uh you know it's the ruling planet of aries and the eclipse so everything related to the eclipse is sort of being held off because Saturn is the one that has the final say. Saturn is really the ruler of this reality, the construct that we live in, the consensus and the hmm, constructed reality. So Saturn is the judge. Saturn gets to say when things move forward, and they will as Mars gets past Saturn. But there is, I mean, that seems like a good thing in some ways because she's could have been like really crazy off the charts, no pun intended. So this is like, you know, putting a governor on the speed of the unfolding of events um, and stuff going on behind the scenes because Pisces is the 12th house to the eclipse, to Aries. It's the, the house before it, which is the hidden house. And Pisces is the natural sign of the 12th house, hidden stuff. So the actions and the restriction thereof or the governance guiding and planning of Saturn is what's happening behind the scenes and maybe even underwater. <laughs> Icy's ruling the oceans. But as things unfold, we will see certain markers that let us know what is coming and the next couple of days I think are going to be more interesting than the actual eclipse itself so what did I really want to talk about today well in my weekly show if you missed it go back and uh, check that out um talking about the eclipse and talking about the aspects through April 15th, talking about the Mercury retrograde. I, I did talk somewhat about, not somewhat, but I did talk a lot about the asteroids that are involved, the degrees that they're sitting at. It was pretty exhaustive and exhausting. That's another Saturn Mars Keyword exhausted. 
exhausted, exhausting. So anyway, things start to move forward. Not really because, <laughs> yeah, they do in a sense, but not really because Mercury is retrograde. But some of the pressure gets let off as Mars moves away from Saturn. And we have the waxing moon in the new moon cycle of things and the 10th 11th looks pretty pretty interesting as the events build april 12th like i was talking about in the weekly squaring saturn mars so that will set some things off jupiter's just getting closer to uranus we have the Mercury Sun conjunction in Aries. There is a message. April 11th. 11 is the master number. And April 11th, let's see, that would be a five. I'm thinking about my three, six, nine days. So the six would be, the 12th would be the six in numerology. I'm just saying because 11 is a master number and Mercury conjunct the sun is at 22. And then after that, in about a week or so, starting in about a week, we have the perfection of the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction, which will get to 22 degrees also. So I'm just taking note of that because it's interesting. Venus isn't really doing anything. It's in Aries. It's moving towards the North Node. But I want to talk about, because I did talk about asteroids. I wanted to go into the stars, the fixed stars. Because I thought we could get some very interesting deeper layers of of the uh, planetary alignments and what stars they're falling on. So I will go over to Constellation of Words and share my screen. Here we go. And action. Let's first check out the degree that Mars and Saturn, which is giving us a headache, sleepless nights, constipation, depression, sluggishness, etc. 15 degrees of Pisces. They're at, at this moment in time on April 9th. Mars is at 13. Saturn is at 14. So here we go on in this column here. This is the degree alignment of the fixed star in the year 2000. They really do progress quite slowly. So let's look at 15 degrees of Pisces. We have Ashurnar. And that is a fixed star located in the constellation Eridanus, which is the river, the river Po, or is it Fo? And this is the river that Jupiter struck Phaethon, remember Phaethon and his chariot, he was struck down to earth with a lightning bolt from Zeus uh, and Zeus, I'm sorry, Phaethon was cast into the waters of the river of Eridanus. So in previous shows, I've talked about my feeling on the significance of Eridanus, what it 
represents for us. I do see a correlation with, um, yes, rivers, but also banks, river banks, and banks like financial banks because we have the river, it has its flow, its current, and the current, the currency is held in place by the banks. And I've seen uh, with the um, with the transits through Taurus, some of the stars are in, I think, Pisces. I think there's a, at least one maybe in Aries, but um, we're talking about right now 15 degrees of Pisces. I think it, there is something, a fixed star in Eridanus that's located at the early degrees of Taurus. So that's the span basically of that constellation. So these are the things that I've seen associated with the constellation. This particular star, Ashinar, I believe it has a resonance to Saturn. And let me see if I can find it. Um, well, according to Ptolemy, all the stars, with the exception of Ashinar, are like Saturn. So it does have a very Saturn-like, serious feel to it, tendency towards depression. But a lot of these stars are known as in their influence being like Saturn, except for Ashinar. So let's just read about Eridanus. Okay, so gives a love of knowledge and science, many much travels, many changes, position, authority, but danger of accidents, especially at sea and of drowning. So these are the things that Mars, Saturn, um, the type of events and experiences people may be um, going through. So, or we would see um, a common thread, a th common theme, science, you know, knowledge. It seems like a Jupiter, Saturn, I mean, Jupiter, um, Uranus kind of a correlation. That's just my thought authority and events regarding ha things happening at sea and and drownings so we need to look at that for what may be happening this week and again tomorrow i think it'll be exact yes the 10th that'll be Saturn and Mars at 14 to 15 degrees, and then Mars starts to move to 15, 16 degrees, April 11th, but it's still very close. So this influence spans the week. Okay, the star itself, Ashinar, gives success in public office, beneficence, and religion. So what are we looking at here? Um, things having to do with people in those positions in public office, in a religion, um, I would even go so far as to say people in law enforcement, but high investigations like FBI type stuff, or because they tend to be lawyers. So those involved in the legal uh, profession or connected in some way public office they're all lawyers right well placed it promises happiness and, and success by giving good morals faithful adherence to one's religious beliefs philosoph or philosophical inclinations according to tradition ashinar is credited with bestowing high offices in the church especially if conjunct jupiter now 
it is conjunct Saturn. So I feel like we may be talking about judges and with Mars, um, that can be hostility and attacks, anger, um, because Mars is not considered so much a happy planet and neither is Saturn. I, and I see other indications that there's a lot going on politically. There's a lot going on in the courts. Um, so what, what could we see? This would be very much influencing religious beliefs. I think there's a lot of that being stirred up of what I've been seeing and so that would be what we could be looking at let's look at the other star at 1516 which is Anka now this is in the constellation Phoenix very interesting star very small constellation I don't think it has many stars prominent. Um, Anka is the one pretty much. I don't know if there are. Anyway, so Mars, Saturn conjunct Anka in Phoenix. Phoenix, the word Phoenix was said to come from Phoenicia. The Phoenicians were a seafaring people. So there's that correlation, the legend of the Phoenix. Please, side note, footnote, go check out Archaics, spelled with an X at the end, and his videos on the Phoenix phenomena. So this constellation is the phoenix has been an astronomical symbol of cyclic period some versions of the well-known fable making its life coinc coincident with the great year of the ancients this is exactly what archaics is talking about the return of the phoenix the phoenix is a large body that has a cyclical return and when we have that return time after time in history things get wiped out like really <laughs> and and that's why a lot of our ancient history is missing so uh this star is Ash um anka is con in the constellation of Phoenix. So this is a marker and interesting that his information, Archaic's information on this cyclical period of the great year where he has gone through ancient texts and identified the reoccurring event known as the return of the Phoenix. So go check him out on YouTube. He's on uh, Twitter also. So the Egyptians knew that this phoenix bird as Bennu. There is an asteroid called Bennu. I need to make a note to check that out. It's not in the, it's not in, I have to add it to Serenu or make myself a an ephemeris venue. Okay. We might check that out later. All right. So yes, the Egyptians, the Benu bird, and it is a symbol of immortality. What else can we speak about? There's a lot on this site of constellation of words as far as 
the as far as the um, origins of this astro this in this ancient astrology and the etymology is fascinating. So Phoenix, Greek phoinos, blood red, phonos, murder, lovely, to strike, Latin defender. It's just talking about the roots, the etymological roots. And O European Gwen to strike, kill, derivatives, bane, cause of harm, ruin, death, baneful, gun, defend, defense, fence, fend, offend, offense, all those etymological correlations. So Greek word for nos for red or blood red because the phoenix is associated with fire and the sun. Greek word for purple is phoino. The bird was said to be purple. Okay. What else? Phoenicians source of purple dye. All right, all right, okay. Funeral pyre at the end of its life. Sun reaches its apex. Heat of rays ignites ignites the nest, and the phoenix perishes in the flames. Okay, so you get it. It's also associated with Guy Fox. F A W K E S is related to phoenix, said to be said that the naming of fox arises from the phoenix's tendency to burst phoenix's tendency to burst into flames so we're talking about guy fox and the gunpowder plot to blow up the english house of parliament hmm with gunpowder hmm i talked about asteroid house i think it's at 18 degrees of Pisces right now. Mars is moving towards 18 Pisces. I'm sure asteroid house will have moved by the 15th. However, watch. There's a lot having to do with explosions, fires, fireworks, um, and Mars could ignite fires in Pisces, um, we're dealing also with liquids, flammable liquids, just saying. All right. Influences of Constellation Phoenix gives a pioneering disposition, ambition, power, come uh, together with a long life and lasting fame. Stars said to be activated at the end Invent, ugh, invention of braille new ways to see new light the invention of electric incandescent lamp light the early bird satellite was used to transmit television pictures across the Atlantic new eras new governments hmm. We could see this sort of echoed in this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that we have coming up. So let's look at that degree. It's slowly perfecting as Jupiter moves towards Uranus. And they will come together more exactly. 21 22 degrees around april 17th so we're talking about a week from now and this is a very interesting aspect for for good or for not so good it will probably shock a lot of people and you could consider this the aspect of a great awakening no doubt. And Mars will be starting to sextile Jupiter and Uranus starting around the 17th or so. So next week looks fun. 
right? Doesn't that look fun? <laughs> uh, as I've been studying astrology over the years, you know, at first, my instinct was to look at an aspect and be like, oh my God, that looks crazy. And, you know, going to worst case scenario and thinking about all of the, all the shit that, that could go wrong, you know, complex PTSD, hypervigilance, long-term <laughs> nervous exhaustion. <laughs> Ah, so Jupiter is right now around 17, 18, and that's in Cassiopeia on the fixed star Rucha. Cassiopeia is the Ethiopian queen, the husband of King, wife of King Cephas and the mother of Andromeda. Good song by the gorillas. The chained woman who was rescued. She was going to be eaten by the sea monster, Cetus. All of these constellations are roughly Aries, Taurus, maybe some in Pisces, I forget. Um, and she was saved by Perseus. And Perseus, constellation Perseus, is in and around there too. And Perseus is associated with mycelium. Fun fact. Now, so Jupiter right now is passing over Ruka or Rucha the constellation of Cassiopeia is associated with or influences of lessons in humility, bloodiness, boastful, exaggerated pride are some of the known traits of the nature of Saturn and Venus commands power and respect in the Kabbalistic tradition. The constellation is associated with the Hebrew letter Beth and the second tarot trump, the high priestess. All right. Other influences, metalwork, goldsmith, jewels, precious metals, and jewelry and adornments. What else? What else? Trade. Gold, yeah, gold and silver, metals, coins, and crafts associated with all of that. So I would point to Jupiter being on or past, you know, connecting with the constellation of Cassiopeia um, with precious metals, commodities in investing, raw materials, but especially metals. And I think we saw a lot of price action with that, if I'm not mistaken. But Jupiter is moving forward to 20 Taurus. It'll go from 19 to 20. It's been at 19 for a minute. And as it approaches 20 degrees Taurus, we're looking at Botine, which is in the constellation Aries. It's the back hindquarters of the ram. So it does have an Aries feel to it. Uh, so this is associated with helping 
find treasures and retaining of captives. I would connect that also with making arrests, maybe buy and sell, but avoid the sea. Again, the sea is coming up is not a great place to be. It's associated with the golden fleece and Jason and the Argonauts. Da, da, da. It's the fifth tarot, Trump the Pope. All right. Building of empires, administration of large empires, territories, conquered territories. So what else can we see about that? Has a lot to do with international travel and exploration, hospitality, doo, 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 doo. all right, that's pretty much it. But what else is at 20 degrees of Taurus? Rana, all right, Rana, that's another star in Eridanus. So we have two connections with Eridanus, Eridanus, whatever. And everything that I mentioned before, knowledge, science, travel, authority, and danger of accidents, but especially at sea and of drowning. So those are the influences of Eridanus and drowning can be figurative. So are we talking about the banks? Are we talking about rivers? Are we talking about Jupiter and Sagittarius are associated with bridges? We've seen those influences, have we not? Jupiter has been here for a while and so has Uranus. Uranus was actually at 20 for a while and just got to 21 a few days ago. Let's see where what's going on at 21. Nothing really at 23 to 24. Taurus, we have Zorak that is in Aridana. There we go. Same influence. The star itself, Zorak, has a Saturnian character. Anyone who has this star connected with a planet in his chart should not endeavor to take life too seriously or put too much weight on everything people say. This person should struggle to overcome melancholy. See, that's the Saturnian influence and the association with uh, Eridanus, the constellation being associated with depression, melancholy. So drowning can be in a metaphorical sense in, you know, in a, in, in an emo on an emotional level, feeling overwhelmed, drowning. Okay, uh, otherwise the star could trigger off fear of death and suicidal tendencies. So Mars, Saturn, Mars, Saturn is happening in Eridanus and Jupiter, Uranus. Jupiter expands and Uranus is sudden and I'm going to talk about some of the influences of Saturn from a traditional astrological perspective. I'll read from that 
um, medical astrology book because that was very interesting of some of the things that I think we could be seeing triggered off with this eclipse. Now, remember, eclipses start a cycle. Not everything happens on the day of the eclipse. Things unfold as the eclipse degree is triggered and we have these aspects triggered, which right now is just happening with the moon. The moon on the 10th is triggering the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which will bring the influence of these stars that I just talked about. And then when the moon goes through Gemini on the 12th, it'll square the Saturn-Mars aspect, triggering off that influence. So these are the things to be aware of, to watch for, because what I just said here, Zorak, that's a 23, 23 Taurus. So it gets triggered with the moon's transit through through Taurus. And, you know, the move, moon moves quickly. It's a passing influence, but it, it sets off this energy. This energy starts to get dispersed with the moon hitting that degree. Uranus is approaching that degree. Jupiter is approaching that degree. Jupiter expands everything in its path. So it's expanding the influence of, of Uranus, which is highly erratic, very impulsive, and they're both moving towards the star Zorak in Eridanus, which has the influence of everything that I just talked about. So, you know, as with all astrology, it's not all good and it's not all bad. It is just an energy. It's just an influence. So what that means is Jupiter Uranus, it's a sudden expansion of this energy. However, it, Uranus is a liberator. This could be someone who has been experiencing um, a lack of freedom or a feeling of heaviness and depression. That could be, this influence could be that person suddenly having a reset with the eclipse, right? We have Mercury conjunct the sun. I mean, that's like, that could be, literally be information that changes your mind about something right um maybe you're sick and tired of being sick and tired you know what i'm saying this is where the the sort of angry or impulsive energy isn't bad because it could piss you off that you're feeling stuck or that you you know, or um, that you want to change so badly because you're just tired of being, you know, under the thumb, whatever it is. And so that's where this reset could be coming from when the moon, I'm sorry, Mercury and the sun converge at 22 degrees of Aries. Let's look at that degree. Mercury retrograde, every time we have a Mercury retrograde, it does conjunct the sun as the as Mercury is slowing down, the sun catches up to it. So um, I forget if this is the inferior conjunction or I don't know, one of them is in between us and this, I can never remember. I'm shit with the technical details, but anyway, it is 
a message. It is the soul connecting with the mind in a sense. Baton Kados. Yeah. 20. It's rounded up to 22 degrees of Aries. This is where Mercury is retrograding. It's at Akamar. Did we talk about that? That's Eridanus. This feeling of drowning, of being swept along with the river. But Baton Kados, that's in the constellation Cetus, which is the sea monster that is supposed to devour Andromeda until she gets saved, rescued by Prince Charming. So Baton Kados, I know, is associated with depression. It has a Saturnian influence also. So let's read what some of the influences are. It portends to falls and blows. That feels like a very Mercury retrograde thing. In Aries, hitting one's head. Be careful. Um, it sort of feels like the intense speed and electricity of Jupiter conjunct Uranus and then the sort of like slow wobbliness of Mars and Saturn. It's just kind of creating this sort of dichotomy and an opposite influences, if that makes sense, where even, I mean, there could be with Pisces, there could be over you over medication over use of substances i mean this is the kind of thing where somebody's on multiple medications prescription and even coupling that with alcohol or you know sleeping pills i've talked about this before be so careful pain meds psychotropics not psychotropics, you know, like antidepressants and stuff like that and sleep and sleeping pills. You just don't know how many you took. So you take too many. So that with the influence of Botkatos, tendency towards falls and blows, you know, there could be people slipping, falling, having accidents. Pisces rules the feet, tripping. Okay, what else? The star, sorry, the constellation Cetus is like Saturn. It is said to cause laziness and idleness, but to confer an emotional and charitable nature with the ability to command, especially in war. So we are looking at people in the military and wars. It is a Mercury retrograde, so that will make things interesting. Uh, makes one am amiable, prudent, prudent, happy by land, C helps recover lost goods. Hmm. Cover lost goods. All right. What else? So it can also be the constellation itself can also be associated with seafood. Um. food or other products that come from sea creatures, dye, the dye, you know, uh, I don't know, there's something about the blood of the sea creatures and salt, sea salt, 
So supplements. What else? Fish sauce. Ew. I'll use an Asian. <laughs> sea venom is sea salt. Used in Asian cooking. These are just some associations. Side note, I am soaking some sea moss right now because that is so... So here's one way that you can also use this influence of the astrology, right? Um, it feels like we're depleted with minerals and that happens. That ha can happen around eclipses with solar flares or diet in general. Um, sea moss is so potent and chocked full of life-giving minerals. I was taking it at one time last year. It does become very salty. I don't recommend taking a lot of it, but I felt great. So anyway, this star or this constellation is associated with all of these things. So my, th my thinking, my feeling is, let's say you had Mercury conjunct this transit of the sun and Mercury retrograde um, and it's on a planet, let's say it's your Mercury, right? So that's your mind, mental processes. Maybe you need some like, like sea supplements, things that come from seaweed or, or uh, sea creatures themselves, right? Just a thought. All right, the star bot and Kados gives compulsory transportation. Sounds like prisoners to me, and that already came up. Um, change, compulsory transportation, compulsory change or emigration, misfortune by force or accident, shipwreck but also rescue, falls and blows. Whale really means monster. Saturnine properties such as inhibition, reserve, caution, solitude, and simplicity are often forced onto such people. You know, so we're talking about um, people who are being held held captive can also be figurative um saturnine properties such as inhibition reserve caution solitude and simplicity are often forced onto such people either by mundane power or higher power so there's a lot happening right now in the astrology that says you know you are forced to Um, I don't know. You're kept from being able to move freely with Mars, Saturn in Pisces. I mean, this could be people in the hospital or you just feel like you're trapped. You can't move. You can't change your situation. And that can be depressing. So it's either people who are being forced to move, forcibly transported. You know what I'm getting at, right? <laughs> I think. I think I have a thinking audience. So, I mean, you sometimes you have to use your brain and I'm not going to spell it all out for you because there are these things going on, but you can also feel like you're being forced to make a change. It's not coming from external authorities such as government. That's what it's meant by mundane power. It would be by a higher power, right? So sometimes ideas are propagated in which make life for the native try or troublesome. To such persons, fate is usually one of change. Jupiter Uranus can bring that change. 
Mercury retrograde can bring that change. It could be a change that you make yourself because you are just so, you know, tired of being stuck. So people influenced thus tend to depression or dwell on the thought of death. So depression is really hopelessness and or hope deferred like I've been waiting so long for things to change I just can't hold on any longer um, and death for them seems to be a good option life is full of humiliation renunciation and obstacles that's very Saturnian but the position of the complete chart is always important, very important. So this is Kados, 22 degrees Aries, April 11th, the sun conjunct, Mercury retrograde. And this is, you know, a very important message we could be hearing from people, but that's a Mercury retrograde thing. You hear from people from the past. And I mean, this is like a phone call from somebody who like, you know, you had a falling out with maybe. Um, and they're remembering you as being somebody who made them feel better, lifted them up, maybe supported them could be getting an apology. There's a lot of like guilt and regret that comes with Saturn and Saturnian energy. And Mercury retrograde is really going back through like the memories of the past. What else is going on here? There was another thing I wanted to look at, but anyway, moving forward in April by April, just looking at other important dates, April 14th and 15th, Mercury retrograde is conjunct Chiron, and it's at the degree of the eclipse. By the 15th, it's at 19. It's conjunct Chiron. So there are thoughts and discussions and our mind is, is being forced to sort of rewind and go over the past in order to heal and looking at the self in Aries as that wound came up with the eclipse which was conjunct Chiron now let me see because there's an interesting asteroid. I talked a bit about it on the weekly show. Bandersnatch. So the Bandersnatch is from a Lewis Carroll poem. A few of them, I think. But it's sort of this concept of like a boogeyman. And the Bandersnatch lives through the looking glass. So, you know, Lewis Carroll wrote Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass and if you think of that as being the other side or um, the subconscious unconscious shadow lands and going through the looking glass is the exploration of the other side where creatures dwell those are those are our fears and our our shadow issues and suppressing them can force them to pop out in uncomfortable ways but the bandersnatch is this idea of our worst fears coming to light and this was activated this asteroid Bandersnatch was uh, active with the eclipse. So 
Bandersnatch was also the name of an episode in the series Black Mirror, if you're familiar with that. And that is, that's an interesting episode. And so it's about, you know, a video game developer and the concept of a video game, which is, you know, where you create your own ending. So it's the idea of creating our own reality or how how reality is created and the concept of breaking free let's say of the construct you know the consensus reality that we are participating in until we realize that there's another way and so this bandersnatch asteroid is also triggering the awareness that reality is malleable that not only can mons quote monsters manifest in our reality it's the unresolved shadow fears guilt whatever um manifesting as a physical event in our reality because it's not integrated we haven't integrated that part of our shadow so it has to become physical right in order for us to be aware of it and you know for those who are doing shadow work and we kind of understand with that inner reflection comes self-awareness that we can connect experiences and events with a triggering of something that needs to be resolved within us right um a wound chiron um identity issues or um just whatever our worst case scenarios are but then there's this also the flip side where people are becoming more aware of how much control we do have and how we can start to manipulate reality magic basically and this being in aries we have to look at mars right mars is that passion that will and it's pushing through saturn saturn is solid reality saturn is the planet that is related to our construct of the matrix it's what boxes everything in it holds everything in place it's the crystallization principle so mars busting through saturn is this rising burgeoning energy of self-governance and self-determination because we're sick and tired of it you know you always got to be pushed to the limit in order to break free and get to the next level so whatever the challenges are remember it is pushing us towards our destiny what else can we look at? Did I look at asteroids? I'm sh uh, not in this show. I know in my in my weekly, I looked at the asteroids in Pisces to see. I just forgot. There's not a whole lot going on. Aphrodite, Bernie. Mm. I'm not. I really haven't delved into Bernie. It could be a person's name. I know it is a person's name. I think it's a scientist. I think it might have something to do with space travel exploration. I forget. But Mars and Saturn, house is at 18, and Nessus, abusive, blood feuds, uh, um, 
revenge, love triangles. We've talked about all of that. All right. So I guess, was there anything else in Taurus? I briefly mentioned this in the weekly Jupiter Dionysus relating to the cult of Dionysus. Um, yeah, I mean, there's what else? Uranus, panacea, cures, clotho. What was 23 for us again? All right, so clotho and tantalus. This is a one of the fates. And also I associate this with clotho in terms of its association with DNA as an enzyme. I don't much know much about it, but if you're interested in that, please research. Tantalus is temptation, obviously. What was 23? I'm so tired. My memory is like shot today. 23 Taurus because Uranus and Jupiter were moving towards that particular star. Zarak, that's right. Pantalus and Clotho in Aridonis. Yeah, I mean, this is fate, obviously, events, fateful, the story surrounding fateful events, the weaving of karma, um, and Tantalus, I mean, that's very tempting, right? On the star Zorak struggling to overcome melancholy otherwise it could trigger off fear of death and suicidal tendencies all right yeah that was what i was looking at so what's venus doing didn't really talk too much about her she's not really making aspects except to the moon This week she is about five, six, seven, moving up to 12 degrees of Aries. So we're talking about Eurydice that's associated with females and depression and being overwhelmed and you know that metaphorical drowning type apophis salacia i like to say salacia but by 12 by 12 april 12th well apophis will probably have passed but Venus will be conjunct Celestia and sextile to the moon. Venus, relationships, females, and salacious gossip. Very interesting. Hera is moving through Aries. This is today as of the ninth. This is where they are. And Venus is five Aries, Apophis, and Salacia, nine and nine. And Hera at 10. So Apophis is going to catch up with Hera. And so is Venus. Hera is the wife of Jupiter, Zeus. So it's... Hera and Juno, same, you know, just one is Greek, one is Roman. I always get them mixed up. So the wife, marriage, partner, that kind of thing. So something probably coming up around that. 
but other than that, I mean, the, the major concentrations are here in Pisces with Mars and Saturn, Aries with Venus, North Node, Chiron, Mercury, retrograde, and the sun. And then what is building up in Taurus with Jupiter and Uranus. I said I was going to talk about Uranus energy and read from the Encyclopedia of Medical Astrology by L. Cornell. So let's look at some of the things that Uranus is associated with. Because Jupiter is building this energy up. All right. So I think we need to pay attention. Because I think the fun part about Uranus energy is the unexpected, wild, and weird stuff that happens. Paranormal type things. The influence of Uranus is interesting. Let's just say a lot of metaphysical things could be being triggered with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So let's look at Uranus. Let's see what this has to say. You could go to archive.org and this is a free. I think you could down, download the PDF, but um, this text is free on archive.org, Encyclopedia of Medical Astrology. I like old books. When was this published? I can't find the publishing date, but Howard Leslie Cornell, MD, was a naturopathic physician practicing in U.S. and India. Um, so in 1918, so this is really old. Um, roughly around, maybe maybe this was published in 1933. It has been widely sought after ever since and remains one of the most remains the most indispensable medical astrology book in existence so let's check it out check it out influence of uranus uranus is said to be a ruler among planets his influence is of sudden and spasmodic nature and fundamentally has been observed and determined to be more psychic and mental than physical so the influences of Saturn are more of the mind and the psychic phenomena. Um, and has more of an influence on the brain, rules the pituitary body, and the pituitary gland is one of the spiritual centers. The pineal gland is closely associated with it also but that is ruled by Neptune in spiritual and psychic development. So right off the rip, Jupiter, our beliefs, ideologies, higher learning, higher understanding, religion, yada, yada, expansion in general is moving towards Uranus. So this is everything that it's expanding. So in terms of medical astrology, it's pointing out the glandular structure and association with the planet Uranus as being um, the pituitary. So the physical and medical effects of Uranus are more neurological, Oh, jeez, somebody's calling me. <laughs> Yikes. 
Oh. Okay, I muted it. <laughs> I hope everyone could not hear that ringing. Someone's quilling me on my phone, which when it's close to my computer, rings on my computer. Anywho, it can wait. So in terms of when we're talking about medical astrology, it, this is more of a nervous condition, neurological condition, maybe hormonal because it's linked to the pituitary. All right, so what else do we have here? Very few people are as yet able to respond to its higher vibrations. And it is asserted that the influence of Uranus and Neptune those being outer planets and higher octaves of personal planets will be more positive over races yet to come in the distant future as the sixth sub race and sixth race itself, which is a theosophical concept, root races, Blavatsky. The occult significance of Uranus is well set forth in the book message of the stars by the Heindels. So if you want to look that up, uh, Max Heindel, message of the stars. So Uranus has an affinity with the eyes as this planet rules the ether and transmits the rays of light. Also Uranus has an affinity with the sign Aquarius, we understand that it rules Aquarius, Saturn also in ancient astrology. Before we had discovered Uranus, Saturn was the ruler of Aquarius. But so we're talking about this Jupiter Uranus alignment expanding the influence. And Uranus, what will what will we see? Things having to do with the eyes, with ether, with light, the pituitary gland. I would imagine because Neptune rules the pineal gland. We will be having, or we have had, some um, transits to Neptune. So Neptune being that ruler, Mars will be conjunct Neptune. April 24th, 25th, exact around 28th. So towards the end of April, we have Mars activating Neptune, which is the ruler of the pineal gland. Now, when I've been looking at the transits and seeing the transits to Neptune at the end of Pisces there, um, what I'm really seeing is I'm noticing what people see or don't see in terms of in terms of the third eye and the pineal gland seeing is spiritual sight so you can see in visions you can see in the spirit but seeing in quotes means being able to observe and having the awareness of what is what is hidden and what has been obscured by glamour um, and what as our awareness and our consciousness expands aka our third eye is opening we see things for what they are and the Neptune transits have been triggering people to question reality and to see where the lies are right so, you know, these are events like everyone gets to see that 
the news media has manipulated and put out photos and videos, which are clearly AI, clearly manipulated, clearly not a real person, Kate Middleton. So these coincide, these transits coincide with the activation of the pineal gland and with Uranus, Jupiter, the pituitary. So, and the spiritual centers. So if you really think about it, the eyes, the pineal and the pituitary all form a triangle. So they're all kind of like connected to one another. So Uranus has affinity with the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. So if we're talking about third eye opening and the eyes being the window to the soul, could this also not be a greater awareness of when you look in someone's eyes to be able to discern the quality or the characteristics of their soul, which includes uh, uninhabited bodies and bodies being inhabited by negative and malevolent spirits. Okay, going on, going on, going on. Uh, talks about aspects to Uranus, expanding the intuition, altruistic and humane qualities, love of truth, greatly increases spiritual foresight and perception, intuition, precognition, etc. Uh, da, 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 da. the influence and especially Uranian affect afflictions tend to many changes, removals, journeys, and to be restless and unsettled until the native becomes awakened to the higher things in life. Like we resist these Uranian transits and changes when we are too much rooted in the physical but the awaken when the awakening comes that's when we realize oh there's a higher purpose there's a reason why these things are happening and it's uncomfortable because i am resisting so the more we drag our feet the more we want to not deal with the fact that we don't really have any control not really um but yeah we do have more control than we think when we are cooperating with the intent of our soul right anyway pushing us towards awakening in the higher things in life colors deep rich blue Anybody painting the roof of the house these days? Interesting. House. Hmm. Mars is going to conjunct asteroid house somewhere around 18, 19, 20, maybe in Pisces. Will we see that color blue come up again? I don't know. Okay, other characteristics, spasmodic, blah, blah, blah. drugs of Uranus, metals. Okay, that to me is pharmaceuticals, maybe. I don't know. Um, the element that Uranus rules is ether. Ether this or ether that. Events tends to sudden and unexpected. Evils, evils of Uranus come sudden, suddenly, as well as the good he brings. Really, all depends on the state of the person 
the mental state, the spiritual state, it acts as a lightning rod, but a lightning rod for positive events, just as well as crazy negative ones. And this is where you can expect that like attracts like. The eyes, Uranus rules, ether, light rays. See blindness, ether, eyes, rays under light. So could we see sudden blindness, hysterical blindness? Hmm. Anyone looking at the solar eclipse? I heard that they caught a bunch of eclipse glasses that were like basically useless trash that came from oh they were being sold on amazon there was a recall or something like that like uh okay i can't imagine that you know that would not be a thing where somebody might come up and like oh my god i'm my cornea is a damage whatever okay else impulses sudden eccentric uncommon people, bohemians, and those who are abrupt, original, and not of the ordinary type. If you have planets in Aquarius or you have Uranus prominently placed in your chart, if you have planets aspecting your Uranus, if your Uranus is on the ascendant, the midheaven, the descendant, the the fourth house cusp, the IC, and there's a tendency, tendency towards Uranian types. Um, eccentric, independent, misunderstood, occult, metaphysical. Um, okay, the principle of Uranus's intuition, journeys, causes many journeys, changes, and removals. We're seeing that in the the astrology the stars that i had pointed out journeys changes forcible removals and forced travel or forced inability to travel people being held in custody or told you're being detained but not arrested but yeah don't jump on a jet jet and fly to the bahamas okay did he okay in terms of the laws of society uranus people rebel against these laws they desire freedom also tends to chafe under the vows and restraints of marriage okay so that has to do with like laws and legal stuff marriages civil unions right and that is also connected to jupiter jupiter conjuncting uranus could be a lot of people suddenly freeing themselves from the binds and constraints and the vows of marriage hmm. interesting thing side note some of the asteroids that I had talked about in the weekly, two of them in particular, Orcus and Aphidus, are at, they are retrograde. They were, they went, mm, I want to say they're probably around 14, 15 degrees of Virgo. So Jupiter only a few months ago, was making a trine aspect to those asteroids in Virgo. And I think one of the things that I'm seeing is people separating their aspect, their assets, or separating from partners who are involved in criminal activities. Just a side note. So this could when this has to do with laws this could be laws changing regarding 
assets, marriage, because of guilty by association with a fetus, criminal, you know, syndicates, and orcas, breaking oaths. I don't know. Just a thought, anyway. That's just a side note. Footnote. Love affairs, affliction of Uranus to Venus, if that's an aspect that happens by transit or by transit to your chart or just transit in general, that's not happening until Venus goes into Taurus. Could that be in May? If this is a prominent aspect for you, looking at mid-May, if the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is a concern for you, if you have planets at that degree in Taurus, 22, 21, 20, around there, or you're being aspected by it, maybe you want to look at that because around the new moon in May, we're talking like May 8th, 9th, something around there. Then we have Venus going through Taurus and Venus will be activating that Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. Then this would be applicable with love affairs, sudden love affairs, having affairs, married people, people in, you know, cheating situations or just taking up with someone out of the blue that's a very uranus thing especially if it's in the fifth or the seventh house trouble with love affairs marriage separations strange events strange love what else can we talk about here I'm just going to go through this quickly. Magnetism, mental, psychic effects, eccentricities, unconventional, da, 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 metaphysics, mm, moral lapses, love affairs. We talked about that. Occult, higher vibration of the occult, metaphysical truth. Da, 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 da. Um, Heindel. Okay. Most writers say that the Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, so like the higher mind. But Heindel of the Rosicrucian Fellowship says he is the higher octave of Venus, which kind of makes sense because if you turn Venus upside down and then add those two arcs on the side, which are almost like a satellite dish, antennas or something like that, um then you would have uranus but anyway that's the way they look at it. so telepathy let's talk about telepathy absolutely 100% uranus and aquarius are associated with let's say things that travel on a wavelength where we can't see them and that includes thoughts so telepathy i would i would venture to guess that people are going to be having experiences of spontaneous telepathy so that's very interesting so the other things are that jupiter is associated with spasmodic explosive shock producing electric neurologic influences okay qualities otherwise known as keywords higher and lower vibrations tend to affect the individual according to his degree of enlightenment or awakening which is what i said right somebody who is unconscious working from their unconscious subconscious is driven by influences and desires that they have impulses they have no clue i don't know why i did it i just did it impulsively right so 
Meanwhile, someone of a higher consciousness is like, oh, I have this certain urge to eat grapes all day. I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, that's lame. That's kind of lame, but um, you get it. Like, they tend to be more aware of what the impulses are. Okay, so abrupt, accidental, acute, advanced, afflicting, airy, air, alternating, altruistic, and anti-peristaltic, uh, arresting, barren, breathing, blinding, bohemian, breaking, bursting, cataclysmic, changeable, clandestine, clonic, cold, Compressing, constructive, contracting, convertible, convulsive, corrosive, cramping, creative, curious, demoni demon demoniacal, uh, disorganizing, disruptive, distorting, distressing, disturbing, dry, eccentric, electric, emotional, enlarging, erratic, etheric, exaggerating, excitable, explosive, Bless you. Extraordinary, fanatical, fractious, fracture, producing, freak producing, free loving, free thinking, fretful, gaseous, hasty, heedless, high strong, hindering, human, humane, hurtful, hysterical, immoral, impeding, impulsive, incoordinating independent injurious inquisitive intuitive inventive investigative involuntary irregular is irresponsible irritating jeopardizing jerky lesional licentious lustful magnetic maniacal masculine mental metaphysical miss understood Morbid, motor disturbing, murderous, nauseating, nervous, neurological, neurotic, obscuring, occult, open minded, original, out of the ordinary, paradox, paradoxical, passional, peculiar, perverting, per phenomenal, philosophical, positive, psychic, quick in action, reactionary, rebellious, reckless, reforming, remarkable. Rending, resisting, resolute, resourceful, restless, romantic, ruling, rupturing, scientific, shock producing, directed energy weapons. That's my side note. Spas, spasming, strange in procedure, structural, sudden, suicidal, tangential, action, telepathic, temperamental, tempting, tensional, tragic, trembling, twisting, twitching, truth loving, uncommon, uncontrollable, unconventional, unexpected, extraordinary, unorthodox, unprejudiced, unruly, unusual, variable, vibratory, violent. Crazy. In terms of romance, gives bohemian tendencies and love of romance. Um, with sex, uncontrolled passions, great influence over sex nature and the sex organs, tending to oh, I said, uh, and perversions of the sex nature. Side note, sidebar, footnote, there are stars in the constellation, I'm sorry, the zodiac sign of Aquarius. The constellation of Aquarius and the constellation of Aquila, which relate to aberrant sexual behavior, including that of the tendency to... Mm, move the move people about for the purpose of performing acts such acts for mm, compensation shall we say and with persons of beneath a certain age know what i'm saying okay disregard of laws and moral laws 
is associated with Uranus and all of these things again with constellation I'm sorry the astrological sign of Aquarius radioactivity denotes spasmodic tangential and eccentric action Let's see what else. Blah, blah, blah. Sudden, sudden diseases, sudden good, sudden ill, impulse to do wrong, accidents, explosion, shock, the unexpected, uncommon, unusual, unlooked for, unprecedented temptations. We went over that with Venus and love affairs. Ba, ba, ba. Therapeutically, we could be seeing medicine cures their therapies relating to electricity and vibrational medicine and science typical drugs croton oil do not know what that is ether compressed air and gases so you're looking at things like huffing the breathing in of substances when we're talking about potential um drugging and overdosing and that type of thing waves waves of uranus are neither continuous nor rounded but broken and spasmodic it's not a smooth energy it's jagged it's sudden spikes when you're looking at a polygraph seismograph uh chart of crypto markets or you know stock markets it is highly irregular that means high lows and high high i mean low lows and high highs so uranus and the crypto market and jupiter this is all around the happening if you don't know then maybe you're not invested in crypto so huh probably this is not investment advice but i'm guessing that we have probably a dip around the happening but we also have a big spike coming up like this could be the start of a big bull run uranus jupiter that could very well be and it could maybe again not investing advice april 19th isn't that a significant date i don't know um i'll just say that venus which is money um and the ruler of the jupiter uranus conjunction will be conjunct mercury retrograde so that could be a turning point where things really start going up or if they already went up if there was a spike it could come down this will be the approaching of the full moon which tends to be a low point in the cycle, but things do flip around eclipses. And I think we saw a low around the solar eclipse around now. It's, well, it's back up. It's up, it's down. There's going to be, my guess, a dip at some point and then a boom, like parabolic. So we'll see. All right. I think there is a section two <laughs> that seems to be more medical, disease oriented, physical characteristics. Maybe we'll go over that another time. Okay. That wraps it up for today. Thanks for hanging out. 
And how do I get back to my screen share? Stop sharing. There we go. All right, you guys, you know where to find me. All the links are in the description box of this YouTube video. If you're looking to book a reading, which is always a good time to check in around eclipses, retrogrades, because we have big changes and we tend to feel them, but the chart will tell us what we can expect. So if you're looking for a consultation, you can either email me at astrolunashick at gmail.com or contact me on the Astrolunashick hotline at 914-222-1231. And for other ways to connect with me and follow and keep up with my craziness, look at the links down below. Okay. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your week. And as always, ciao for now.